Henry Baker and the football boots. Henry saw the pencil on his way to school that morning lying between two rows of bumps leading up to the zebra crossing. Just as he bent down to pick it up though, the green man had lit up and his mum had pulled him up and across the road. Henry thought about it on and off during the morning. It was a small thin pencil like the one his nan had tucked inside a notebook and a very shiny black. Oh, there was no way it'd still be there when he went past again, he thought. He just wasn't lucky like that. All the same, he was ready when the class went that way in a long line, two by two, for games. Yes, it was still there. He scooped it up into his trouser pocket just before Mr Shaw turned round to check that everyone was across. It felt very important that no one saw what he was doing, but he wasn't sure why. All through games, through the long boring bit of being chosen almost last for the teams, then the long cold muddy bit of having to run round in PE shorts in the rain, Henry thought about the pencil in his trouser pocket. Finally, the whistle went. They all got changed, then went back to school for lunch. Henry held the pencil tight all the way, liking the way it fitted into his fist. It wasn't until maths that he got a good, quiet look at it. As usual for Wednesdays, Mr Jones handed out a test, and as usual, Henry finished it with plenty of time to spare. He pulled the pencil from his pocket and smiled. It was exactly as good as he remembered it. A black so shiny he could see a tiny light bulb reflected in it from the ceiling light. It was about eight centimetres long, but only three or four millimetres thick. Then, as he turned it over, Henry grinned with happiness. It had his name on. OK, he knew that HB really meant hard something. Hard black? But still, Henry Baker knew the pencil was meant to be his. He didn't use it until late that evening, when he was doing homework on the living room floor. His dad and big brother Mike were watching the football, Henry half listening as he wrote a story. The story turned out to be about a boy who had a pair of magic football boots, and, for a change, the words came fast. Henry wrote two pages without stopping, and he even drew a not bad pair of boots at the end. The pencil was smooth on the paper and made the drawing really easy. Too easy, really. The next day, Henry's work began to look very messy, as he put patterns on everything. It just felt so good to draw tiny squares or perfect circles. On one circle, he put black blocks in exactly the right shape to turn it into a football. Sometimes Henry daydreamed about how it would feel to be good at football. His granddad had even played once for Sheffield United, and both his dad and Mike had played for their school teams. Henry's two left feet were a family joke. He drew an eye on the cover of his maths book with a teardrop at the corner and put the last lines in just as the bell went. He slammed the book shut and dropped it on the pile on his way out. Mr Jones was his favourite teacher, so Henry got a real shock when he stomped into the classroom and threw Henry's book on his desk. It was sopping wet. That was a really stupid thing to do, Henry. Spilling water on your book and then just leaving it without mopping it up. You're lucky you didn't mess up everyone's work. You can stay behind and redo your maths homework. Your book's too wet for me to mark. And he went off towards the blackboard, leaving Henry with his mouth open. He felt even worse when he looked down at the book, and the book looked back up at him or at least the eye in the top corner did, then it blinked. A teardrop leaked onto the book. Henry shut his eyes and his mouth, then looked again. Another teardrop was starting at the corner of the eye. He quickly looked in his pockets for a tissue and wiped at the eye. It closed to let him get the drop, then opened again and winked at him. He gulped. Henry spent the next few minutes wiping the eye and thinking like mad. It had to be the pencil. Nothing he'd ever drawn before had come to life. He got it out of his pencil case and looked at it. It 
still looked cool, but now there was a hint of danger in its shiny blackness. I hope you enjoyed the audiobook extract that I narrated. If you'd like to hear more, please get in touch with me, Peter McGiffin, or download a copy from Audible. To hear more samples, please head over to my website at www.petemcvoices.com.